How's everybody doing? Good. I need a little bit louder. How's everybody doing? There it is. There it is. I just drove in from New York, so I'm a little like razzle dazzle a bit. But uh, my name is Sokeel Ross. I'm a member of Everett Company Stage and School. I'm also director and founder of Case Closed, which started in 2004 for a hip hop youth performance group. Now, um, growing up in a gang neighborhood wasn't easy, especially for my parents. In April 17th of 1975, the Khmer Rouge entered Cambodia and invaded the whole country. They enslaved their own people, right? So they, they destroyed every single thing, from hugs, kisses, I love yous, holidays, birthdays, family structure, religion, education, monks, artists, all of that were destroyed. Now when they came into the United States, they didn't know what else to do. So they were on survival mode the whole time. It was work, 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 no play. So growing up, I didn't know how to express certain emotions. I didn't know how to say certain things. I didn't know how to deal with certain situations. I had to learn that from school. And even in school, it was just random thoughts here and there. There was no family structure. There was no family dinner or anything like that. I mean, it was really hard for me to do certain things just because I couldn't express the way myself the way I wanted to. But dance offered me that way to express myself and vent. When I went to classical high school in 95, 96, I started break dancing. And I found this place called Everett Company Stage and School. And I went for my first day to do this open break dance class. As soon as I left, Dorothy comes up to me and she says, hey, you want to do a show? And I'm looking at her, I'm like, what, a show? <laughs> well, here's the deal. It's like 15 to 25 bucks. Um, you skip school. You get f pizza or McDonald's. I'm 15, 16 years old. Yeah, I want to do a show. <laughs> it's an anti-tobacco show for, you know, educational school shows. Sure. I kept doing it, and I kept doing it, and I kept doing it. By sophomore year, I moved out of that gang neighborhood, and I lost touch with a lot of friends I did back then. Um, and I kept dancing. And I just fell in love with the stage. I fell in love with community and the way they made me feel and the way I made them feel. And the age of 18, 19, they asked me to go on my first tour. I'm 18, 19 years old and we're going to New York. Of course I said yes. And I'm teaching all these like universities and colleges at a very young age and doing this kind of work that's community based, social justice based. Everything that I've been going through, they were working, working with it. So I stuck with it. And now I have my own solo show that's been touring around New York and New England and so in San Francisco pretty soon. So I can't wait to do that. It's very, very exciting. But it wasn't easy because I didn't know how to deal with these things. Dance and theater allowed me to learn this in a therapeutic way. And it was hard because you can't go out to my parents and just tell them, hey, you know what? Uh, I don't feel good a certain way and this and that. Their mindset was like, ah, uh, deal with it. Man up, you gotta move on, you know what I mean? A lot of them do not wanna deal with the past. And a lot of them don't wanna deal with the deaths and all the tragedy and all the trauma that they went through. Once they made it to the United States, it's time to move on. Forget what happened, it happened, boom, get it out. Now we gotta move forward. Growing up, I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to move forward because my past was such a blur. When we did a show called Home Movies in 2005, I interviewed my parents for the first time. And that was the first time I sat down and spoke with them for a few hours, and I didn't know 75% of my own history. 75%. So I decided to take that further. In 2013, I went back to school. And I finally got my college degree in 2014, and I was so souped, I was so excited. And that was actually the first time that I got a hug from my father. I was 34 years old. And that was the first time that we took our first family portrait. And it was very hard to deal with. Again, I don't know how to do certain things. Um, it's just not an easy thing to do at times when you're a grown man and you can't f express your emotions the way you're supposed to. Now, learning about my history and finishing college and doing my show allowed me to do that 
Dance allowed me to do that. Theater allowed me to do that. Everett allowed me to do these things I couldn't do by myself. And with this change comes therapy, and then comes the storytelling, and then comes the empathy, and then comes relationship, and then comes understanding. I now understand who I am and why I'm here. And it's a beautiful purpose. And I can't complain about my job at all, because if you love what you do, you're never working a day in your life, all right? And I love what I do. So with that in mind, um, I did this show called From Refugee Camp to Project, and every single day was just swearing, crying, because uh, I didn't know how to do it. And all these stories that I'm trying to put out on stage in front of people, I had to deal with first by myself, and I didn't know how to do that. A lot of kids nowadays still don't know how to do that. And we're not talking just locally in, com in our communities here, but certain immigrant stories, refugee stories globally. We're all going through the same things. Everybody has a story. It's how you tell that story, it's what is important. And that's why I've been doing the work that I've been doing, working with incarcerated youth, kids in the community, anywhere I go in colleges and universities, I make sure that their story is heard, because I want to hear it. Everybody else wants to hear it. And that is a beautiful thing. I mean, I didn't hear about Santa Claus until I was in school, when I was younger, right? So here's a little story about I'll tell you. There was a knock at the door, and we were home alone, I'm not supposed to open the door to strangers. I gotta look out for my brother and sister. I opened the door anyway. There was this fat man in a red suit with a red bag. So I grab the bag, I close the door, I go around, <laughs> and I tell my brother and sister. We opened up the bag, and there were presents everywhere. And they were wrapped in this nice gift wrapping paper, and we tore everything apart. And there were remote control cars, G.I. Joes, Barbies, everything we always wanted, we got. Now, I don't think the toys were meant for us, but I didn't care. I don't even think I said thank you. But for that moment, we had presents. And even though they didn't belong to us, we kept them. So that was my Christmas theme thing, right? So, and all these things I didn't understand, I had to find out later on because I didn't do this in the household. So taking those toys, for me, was like, they got it in school, why should I keep this? He came to the wrong door, that's his fault, right? <laughs> so, with that in mind, I'm gonna share something with you guys, and um, I'm gonna share a snippet of my show from Refugee Camp to Project, and this is very personal, this is very important, and this is a, a work that I've been working on for a very long time, and I want to thank Dorothy and Aaron for pushing me through and through and through, even when I wanted to quit. So right now, I'm going to go to that, and Joseph Q. Music.
The Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot will go down as one of the two or three greatest genocidal, mass murdering, brutal regimes the world has ever seen. I was born in a Thailand refugee camp in the back of a truck. There was no hospital. They converted the trailer of an 18-wheeler into a medical center. I was a really sick child. The lack of medication didn't help either. In the refugee camp, I was given three names. So Kiel, for a place filled with suffering, anguish, and confusion. The place of birth was called Srakao. Since I was a very sick child, they took me to a monk so I can get blessed. Vati was a name given to me by a monk who cured me of my sickness and named me for luck. Another monk named me Chuk for the presence of a flowery face. The color of my skin resembled the color of a lotus flower. As I got better, a lonely stranger tried to buy me for a child of his own, but my mother wouldn't let me go. She already lost six children. She was not going to lose another. Finally, they escaped to America, to California, and then to Iowa. <sighs> the Khmer Rouge separated my parents. My father was a fisherman. They sent him into the forest to find fish, to feed the people. He would only see my mother once a year. They gave him more rice because his work was hard. He'd save it and try to get it to my mother so that she didn't starve. She would cook the rice and eat it secretly because if they found out, they would have killed her. Life was really hard for them. I had six brothers and sisters that I never met. My mother's first two kids were twin boys. They only lived for about two weeks. And then she had Srey Mum. After that, she had another baby girl. She only lived for about two weeks after birth. Her fifth child was a boy. He ended up having a seizure. He only lived for about eight months. Her sixth child was a miscarriage. She fell during her escape from the Khmer Rouge. I'm number seven. I was the first child to survive. Recently, my mother had a dream that her daughter Sarai Mom came to her as a grown child. She said, come, come and meet your other children. All six children who were there were grown and were there as well. Sarai Mom told my mother not to worry anymore because all of the kids were together and they're fine. After the dream, my, mo my mother felt more relieved and happy to find out that her kids were okay. Bye. Oh, go now.
The garage is my father's sanctuary. He has his karaoke system. He has his fridge. He has his little lawn chair. And then he opens up the garage doors, sits underneath the trees, and feeds his squirrels and his birds while listening to his karaoke music and having a beer. And this is life to him right now. And he's enjoying every single moment of it. He's completely different from what I grew up with. He's not as angry anymore. <sighs> My mother still works a factory job, and she hates it. She gets up at 4.30 every single morning just to get ready to go to work. But she gardens every day, and she takes care of her garden as if they were her own kids. And she takes pictures of her flowers and posts them on Facebook. <laughs> and it's weird. The happiness is coming out organically. And that survivor mode is going away. <whistles> now, dur during the process of this show, I came to a realization that uh, in order to get to that healing, I kind of have to go through the pain. And every single night doing this show, I go through that pain. And I go through that healing. And I told you guys earlier that we don't have family dinners and anything like that, so I didn't grow up with it. But because of you guys, this is my family dinner. And I want to thank you guys for giving me that. So thank you very much. Appreciate it.